Join me every month for the inspiration to find your finish line. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Find Your Finish Line. I'm your host, Mike Riley, and this podcast is not only about you being able to find your finish line at a race or an event, but also in life. We've got to find our finish line every day, every week, every month, don't we? And I have guests on that hopefully will help you find your finish line with the inspiration of their lives and the ups and downs they've had and how they've gotten to where they are today. Before I get started with today's guest, Pillar Nutrition, you've heard me talk about them. Pillar Nutrition, a micronutrition company that's designed for products with products around your training, not during your sessions. Triple magnesium powder. Some of you have heard I was introduced to this at Ironman New Zealand last December. And when they gave it to me, they told me, Mike, it'll help you recover faster. It'll help you sleep. Well, I was a little skeptic because I didn't want to take something on the road. I came home. They said, take it about 30, 40 minutes before you go to sleep. And I have been doing it ever since. And I cannot believe the deep sleep I am getting. Triple, new, triple magnesium by Pillar of Performance. You can get it at thefeed.com. They even gave me a code so you can get 15% off. It's M-I-K-E-2-3, Mike 23. You got to try it. The recovery and the sleep you're going to get with it is quite amazing. Our guest today... She is someone that I've been following for a while here, and the reason I really wanted to have her on the show, obviously, is her wealth of knowledge and running, but because of her positive attitude, she's one that is now, after years of uh, not being a runner, she's an accomplished runner now, she's a mentor, she's a coach, she's a mom, she's a wife, and she is my guest. Kim Clark, welcome to Find Your Finish Line. Thank you so much for having me on, Mike, and it's <laughs> awesome to hear you say my name. <laughs> I love that. Well, you, you know, you go by on Instagram. I'm going to bring this up right away, and I usually ask a, uh, another first question first, but I got to go down this road because okay, all the years on the microphone, I would never say the word babe, but you go by <laughs> track club babe, and, and it's yeah. almost... Well, it's like, okay, because that's your handle. That's your <laughs> name on Instagram, Track Club Babe. How'd you, how'd you come up with that? Yeah, so I, I you know, <laughs> wanted to start a blog many years ago, and um, it, back in like 2014. And like back then, everybody was coming up with names that were like a noun. So I wanted to like mm -hmm. have like a persona. And this one guy um, in our um, track club, because I was part of the San Diego track club, and mm -hmm. he would, you know, call us the track club babes. And so I was like, okay, that's an easy name to use. <laughs> so um, it just became my blog name and then um, my Instagram name. And we both, we both live in the beautiful city of San Diego. I was I a member of San Diego track club, you know, back in the day and ran with all them. So it's, it's amazing how that connection is there. Well, you've, you've helped thousands of women to take up running or to restart running. But before I get started with all our questions, I always ask my guests first, what kind of workout did you get in today already? Well, my workout today was chasing my daughter around and <laughs> I will be running. Um, I usually do some sunset runs, sunset because it's the end of my work day. So my mm -hmm. daughter and I will get out for a stroller run this afternoon um, and chasing the daylight is usually how it goes, but she's a great training partner. She is so chill and now she's been like wanting to talk the whole run. So I'm like uh. either singing or talking to her. So I uh, go push her out on the dirt trails behind our house and we have, we have fun with that every day. Oh, good for you. I, I love that. And, uh, you know, it's a little extra workout when you're pushing the stroller, but the strollers nowadays, because yeah. my daughter, when she had her boys, I I'd run with them and I go, this thing rolls like you, you, it, there's no resistance. My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> When when I pushed my daughter bad. in a stroller, daughter in a stroller 35 <laughs> years ago it was much different, you know. <laughs> with oh, them I'm back sure. Then. It's they're they're so nice now, and on dirt it's a little bit harder, but it's still like not bad. It's my my very first time going out there with the stroller. 
I went with my husband and the two of us like got a block and I'm like, you, you do it the rest of the way. This is too hard. It just felt like a lot, <laughs> but now I'm so used to it. So it feels like just an extension of my body. Oh, good for you. Well, as I said, you've inspired thousands to take up running, and uh, uh, especially with all the women out there, which is fantastic. But you were inspired by your father, who was a marathoner. Uh, and then you had one year of cross country in high school. You wanted to, you know, have that running. You figured you had that <laughs> running gene, but you ended up telling your mom and dad, don't come and watch me. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Because my dad was such a good, like he was such a good runner and he only had girls. So I thought, oh my gosh, like I need to be a runner for my dad because he didn't have a son, you know? So like my thought was like my dad would want a son to be like him and he was so good. His brother and him went to state. He ran three marathons by the time he was like 12 years old and he held the world record for the fastest marathon at that time. So there was like a sign at the front of his town saying like world marathon record holder um, because of in his age group he was at that time. So wow. um, I just was like, the only reason I got into running was because he did and I wanted to make him proud. But then when I realized how bad I was, I was like, you guys can't see this. <laughs> <laughs> like it was going to do the opposite of my intention. <laughs> my intention was to like, have feelings of nostalgia and pride that that his daughter was taking up his sport. And then I was like, so slow. I was so injured. I was like, I forbid you to come. I'm so nervous as it is. And I'm literally coming in last at all of these races. <laughs> this is only going to make things worse. I told them, if you come, I'll just sit there on the course. Like, I won't move. So they they uh, respected that. But later on, when I, I did a, a marathon that year, and they let me come, uh, I let them come and watch that. It was an all-day event. <laughs> well, that was, that was big of you to let your parents come watch you in the marathon. <laughs> you, you figured. Yeah. And you, were, was... you, were out, you were out there about six hours on that marathon, and, and you was. got it done. You got it done. I did. <laughs> you finished the marathon. I didn't stop. <laughs> you, you didn't stop. Yeah. But afterwards, you sure as heck didn't did. want to do another one, did you? <laughs> No, no, I was in so much, I ran it untrained. So then the next, like, so then I just could barely walk afterwards. I was just, I was suffering. So, um, I retired from running for basically like 10 years. Retired from running. <laughs> like, like you had yeah. a long, long career, huh? <laughs> yeah. A long successful career and not like <laughs> I was, it was, I was just a mess out there. I didn't know what I was doing. My body was totally overtrained on accident, you know, and I just, I only thought like that I was like, I could never do much with running because I hadn't done much in high school. Wow. Well, so. now you have that time period between then and yeah. your next time you started taking up running at 29 years old. But talk to us about your life in between that time. What, what was yeah. going on in your life? Were you happy with yourself? Were you not happy with yourself? Tell us about that. Yeah. So I went to college. I, you know, I just running didn't seem like it was clicking for me in high school. And then after that marathon, I was in so much pain. I was like, I did it. I did my bucket list. I'm done for now. And like, I always still did want to start back up a running, but I never could make it happen. I went to college. Um, and then I went to law school and, you know, in law school, it was just super high stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very stressful environment and how, and I didn't even drink before I went to law school. But then you get into law school and everybody is like very heavy drinkers, like very, very heavy drinkers. So I got into it just as a matter of being with everyone in this high stress environment. And just, you know, life in DC was a little bit wild. And I, um, you know, I didn't have something like running as a way to cope with all the stressors I was dealing with, um, you know, in law school and, and mm -hmm. trying to pass the bar and everything like that. So, you know, I wish I did have that then or had it in college. It's such a great, um, it's such a great tool for us to have for our mental health and everything, but I didn't have it then. And I, you know, was really stuck in like a party lifestyle when I was living in DC. And ultimately that's one of the reasons I chose to leave DC and move back to San Diego and be with my parents just because I'm like, I need, a re I need a refresh. I need a restart. This is not how I want my life to go. Like, I'm not happy with this. And so I moved back to San Diego. And when I got back here, it's like everywhere you go, you only see people working out. <laughs> <laughs> They're just everywhere. You know, it's yeah. like we have so many beautiful places and like everybody's so active and um, like you're down by the water in downtown. And it's like 
people running and cycling and doing everything. And so I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try this uh, running thing again. <laughs> so that was so, kind of the, the, the tipping point where you saw everybody working out and you said, you know what? Well, maybe, maybe it is for me. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was a combination of a couple things. It was just coming back to San Diego, the great weather and made, makes everybody an athlete here, it seems. And then, you know, I've always wanted to like try to train for a marathon. I still like, mm. even though I had such a disastrous time with running when I was a teenager, like I still felt like maybe I'm supposed to be a runner, you know? And it was just like, even though I knew I came in last at races and I was so injured in high school, like part of me always was like drawn to running, you know, even though I hadn't run for so many years and was so out of shape and I didn't work out at all in any capacity in that time. So I just was like always drawn back to it. So my cousin was doing a marathon. Um, she, she was doing the LA marathon. And mm. so I, I just was like, okay, I'm going to do it too. And I just signed up that same day. I signed up for LA. I signed up for rock and roll San Diego. And then she was doing LA Roadrunners, their, um, local, um, like running program. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to Google something and do it too, because like, I've never been able to start running ever again because I can't make it stick. So I need to like, I need to get, I need to like get it to stick this time. And so I Googled, I found San Diego track club and I just immediately joined and they had a thing on their website that says to join us, you have to be able to run 20 minutes. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, <laughs> so I had to work up to that, you know? And so I was like, really, like I spent a couple months to work up to be able to run 20 minutes so I could feel like I could join them, you know? And, um, but it was like a really good thing because I felt like, oh my goodness, if I don't have some type of accountability, I'm literally never going to make this stick. And I, I felt like I needed somebody to help me out and some type of accountability because just me being on my own, like trying to go on a run just had never worked over the years. So you would be one to give that advice, wouldn't you, Kim, to someone starting 100%. to make sure they, they, they have that social network, that fabric of, of support when they start running, correct? Oh, absolutely. Like for me, I, my willpower wasn't enough in the beginning. It, it mm. didn't get me there, you know? And, and I also didn't have the tools. I didn't have the knowledge. And even in high school, um, my coach was a first year coach. He was a great, a great man. Uh, but he, he probably, uh, d didn't have enough experience with like a young female body and just how to train that because I, I just was totally overcooked the whole time. And I was doing way too much for somebody who came in with zero running experience. So something like that, like, being with mentors who understand how to take somebody from zero activity to making them into a runner without overdoing it. And I just felt like I, I didn't, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help, you know? So it was, um, really good to get plugged into a group, have a coach, you know, he was, um, Paul Greer, he's great. He's the coach for the track club and he's the coach for like everybody, like 500 people. But in my mind, he was my coach. <laughs> he was. So I like, uh, you, aren't, you, hey, you aren't going to believe this. I was with Paul last night here in San Diego. Oh they my get gosh. together. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. so kind. I, I love he's him. Such a good, yeah, he's such a good guy. Um, but you know, he's like the coach for everybody, but I didn't know what I was doing. So I would just go up to him and be like, um, coach Paul, I signed up for a marathon in two and a half months. And I'm, this is me who's just now starting to run 20 minutes at a time. And I'm like, so like how many miles do you think I should get in before like race day? <laughs> and so he was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I was so green and I was just doing too much too soon, but he was, you know, really helpful. Did you, and they, and they, Kim, did you, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, they set you up with mentors too, which is really cool. So you, you get in there and they immediately plug you in with a mentor. And that was really helpful to me. She was like, also my end all be all. I was like, tell me what I'm doing. <laughs> I love that. Well, did you, did you find yourself, you were liking running or falling in love with running? Did you, 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 you all of a sudden said, you know what, this is going to be a big part of my life. Did you realize that at first or did it come on slowly? I feel like it came on pretty quickly. Like I mm. just, you know, I, I think I understood better like how to start training this time. So it wasn't so miserable, which is really helpful. You know, if you want to enjoy something, it helps if it doesn't feel totally miserable. Um, and I wasn't injured, which is also a big thing. If you're not injured, mm -hmm. you like something more. Um, and so, you know, I would go out to the trails behind my house and just 
spend hours out there, you know, every day um, and just processing and thinking and praying. And I just really feel like it helped me to make peace with a lot of things in my life and to come out with a better perspective. You know, I feel like running gives you that time to think through things and hopefully process things well. And, um, you know, if you don't have running and you're just going through your life and it's so busy and so chaotic, you don't really like have time to process things and to come to peace with things and to figure out how to move through hard things well. And I think that that's like such a gift that running gives you. Like you have this like concentrated time for you to just work through things. It, it does. The, the physical part of the body, when you do that, takes care of the mental part. It, I've heard it over and over again from athletes. It's worked for me and you were, and, and to others out there who may just be starting a running program, you watch. It, it does. It's, it's the best therapy I think you can give yeah. yourself. So, Kim, when did you decide when you're, you're running, all of a sudden you go, okay, I've got these big goals. I want to run marathons, the whole deal. Uh, when did you decide to share your running journey with others and why? Yeah, so I, yeah, I started running in 2012 and I like consumed, I like, because I was so excited about running, I like was eating, <laughs> breathing, sleeping, running, which is like how all new runners can tend to be, you know, um, very, very, very excited. Um, so I found all of the running blogs online. I religiously read them. And for me, it was like, I was so hungry for knowledge, hungry for how to get better, hungry for like what I needed to be doing and the shoes and the clothes. And I mean, I just, I didn't know anything. I was going to track practices with basketball shorts down to my knees and cotton t-shirts, you know? So I like <laughs> did not know what I was doing. I was holding my phone for all my runs and on my first couple marathons, I, I held a phone, you know, like I needed another, I needed other runners to tell me what, what I needed to be doing. So I would read all these blogs back in the heyday of blogging. And mm -hmm. so then in 2014, I started my own blog because I was like, oh, I love, I love writing and talking. <laughs> I'll share <laughs> my running um, on a blog. And um, so I started a blog and like I would write every single night a blog post and I was the only person who was probably reading it. Um, but my sister encouraged me to, <laughs> to get an Instagram to just tell people about my blog on my Instagram. So the whole idea was to funnel people over to the blog <laughs> mm -hmm. because yeah. my like readership of one wasn't, it was a lot of work for just me. <laughs> so I got an Instagram and then I just started actually micro blogging on Instagram before people were really doing that. It was, you know, a little bit simpler back then. Um, and I would do long form posts because I was taking my blog and putting it onto Instagram. And so that's basically how I got started. And a lot of what I did was I was just so excited about everything as a new runner. Like I was excited about the little things I was finding that like you add this like small tweak and then it just, you know, explodes your running. And because it was so new to me, I just wanted to share that with people. I feel like um, when you talk to people who've been running for a long time, they don't remember those like little things that they did in the beginning that made that really big difference because that's, of course, like that's how you do it. You know, that's normal. But when you're a newer runner, like every little thing is like gold and you're like needing it and hungry for it. And um, so I felt like what I was like realizing I was so excited about and I wanted to tell people because I felt like a newer runner is able to better communicate this like new thing to another new runner, whereas an older runner might not even remember that that was like really important. Right, right. And, and you know what it is. Runners have always had thousands of questions. Something about when someone gets into running, you would think, hey, you just put a pair of sneakers on, some shorts and shirt and go. But it's much, much more than that. So when you come up with your ideas for your posts and ideas that you want to be able to influence and inspire others. How do you come up with those? Yeah. I mean, so a lot of them have just been based off of like my own training. So when I started running, my, my now husband would tell me your form is terrible. Like you really have to improve your form <laughs> if you want, <laughs> if you want to become a faster runner. And I'm like, no, I'm not working on it. Like it's okay. 
And um, so I finally got shamed into it when I saw a video of myself running and I was like, okay, like, let's, let's start this. And then I was just, once I started working on these different form elements, it became a pretty dramatic improvement. So I was just sharing that as it was happening back in, you know, 2016 or 2015 and um, just show, telling them the things Tyler was telling me that were actually making a difference. And mm. it was like stuff like that, that I was like, this is how you do it. Or like for a workout, this is what I found has been really helpful. And so just like those little things that for me have been like huge, I know w- would be helpful for other people too. And I, I don't know. I just, I think that it's great when we are able to share information and not gatekeep and just like, we're all just trying to get faster together. We're all just but trying to beat the clock, you know? You, you are bringing back so many memories for me when I first started running and uh, a coach would say, what do you, your shoulders are slooped forward, you know, stand up straight a little more, you run like something's pulling you from the chest and all these things yeah. I still remember. And when I change form like that, I go, whoa, this is kind of easier. I'm flowing yeah. <laughs> a little bit better. And you have fantastic form. You look like you have a, uh, a, a nice kick. You, you stride out well. Uh, and I can imagine that wasn't like that at the beginning, huh? <laughs> Not at all. My husband has helped me so much with my form. He like, he helped me so much. He's such a good coach with that. And he has an exercise science background and physical therapy. Uh And he's just the way he looks at a body and the mechanics, like we can go down a street, we'll go down any street and he kind of corrects people's forms and he'll say, oh, their like left glute glute is weak and that's why their right foot like is pulling in that way. It's just so interesting to me, but he like can see anybody's form and like say what's happening. And um, I, I mean, I don't have that gift at all, but I at least know what good form and bad form looks like now based on my own, you know? And so I think it's something that's so simple that you work on just the basics and then you're running, you're, you're just able to run a lot more efficiently. So when you, you suggest the person that contacts you that w- wants to get started with running, what's the very first thing you say to them, Kim? You can go so much further than you think. <laughs> <laughs> there you because, go. Because, you know, it's like uh, we, we just see our running in terms of where we are now. And maybe we think we can go like a little bit further than that. But like running is like the most improvable sport out there. I really believe that. And like once you get like some of the basics into place, like things can just explode. And so th- taking the like limits off of where you think you can go is so helpful because you're only going to go as far as you think you can go. Do women that uh, start a running program, do you think they have less less self-confidence when they begin than than the men do? You know, I don't know. I it, it could be. I was talking to a female colleague in commercial real estate and we were we were talking the other day and she's just like I'm really struggling with confidence. I'm like I feel like I'm an imposter. And I was like you have to believe in yourself. Like you that's the only way we get anything and Um, I think that man or woman, we have to figure out a way to be delusionally confident before we see the results. And that's, um, something that I've learned to be good at in my life. Like I will have nothing to base any confidence on and I will find a way to have delusional confidence in myself because that's really the only way you get from A to B, you know, um, is, is by doing that. And I do think, you know, as women, it's easier to second guess ourselves. And, you know, so yeah, I think the, the results follow the confidence. It's not the other way around, you know, but if you are always waiting for the results to have the confidence, you're going to get to where you want to go a lot slower. Um, you know, it takes, it takes confidence to train how you need to be training to get the results you want. It takes confidence going into a race, believing that you're capable of it so that you put yourself out there and you're like running out of your mind, like your potential, you know, but if you're always scared or if you don't believe in yourself, then you're always going to be, holding back. And so that's why, um, it's, it just, you have to have that confidence first. You have to be like, I know I can do it. I know I'm already a sub three hour marathon or that just hasn't run that time yet. You know, like you have to really believe Mm -hmm. that. I love that philosophy. You're a sub three hour marathon or you just haven't run the time yet. (laughs) That is fantastic. You know, you have it in you, (laughs) you know, I've, I think I've seen such huge improvements from different athletes, from myself, from my husband. So I'm just like, there's really no limits. Like your only limits are really where you think you can go. You know, my husband went from four ten, a four hour, 10 minute marathon to a two eighteen, 
And Come he did on. that. Really? Yeah. Really? Yes. And he did that gradually. He went from a four ten to breaking four to in the three twenties to the low threes. You know, it wasn't like he 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 didn't do it like I did, where I literally ran my first race untrained at six hours. He like was a he was a jogger, a runner. He had played tennis. So he and he trained for that four ten. That was a, a trained marathon. And, you know, he did a full training cycle and he ran a 410, wow. you know, so, um, and, and then he slowly improved beyond that. You know, he, there was a time where he was a 250 marathoner and he's like, like, can I go any further? Is this it? You know? And so, and obviously 250 to 218 is a huge jump. So like just <sighs> off of our own running, I know that like so much more, you're, you're capable of so much more than you even think. Like there's like, there's such big possibility in the sport. Let's talk about uh, injuries and why you think that people, you know, we all get injured. It, it, it's yeah. part of the sport, uh, but there are things that you can do to prevent those injuries. And, and what do you think some of the bigger things are, advice for runners, to try to prevent injuries? Yeah, I think obviously one, knowing if you're injury prone or not is really huge because then you could take more steps. But I would start out with, um, you know, I, I got myself overtrained which is the other side, not injury, but still it's yeah. bad. And I found that setting boundaries in my running and only running um, five days a week or five times a week and having two rest days was really helpful. I think rest days are like really key to prevent that, um, that injury. I think that making sure that you're keeping those easy days mega easy. I do all of my easy days and even all my speed workouts on dirt. Um, I think it's so good to just be on dirt or on grass and just, it's a lot easier on your body than pounding on pavement or on concrete. And even doing my speed workouts on dirt is like, it's easier on my body when I'm doing something that's more high intensity, you know, and you recover faster from it. But you know, the best things you can do are have those rest days, your, the surfaces you're running on sleep is huge. It's so huge for recovery. That's the best way to probably prevent injury. And then your strength training is going to be really, really big for that. And then if you know that you're prone to injury, I would definitely recommend subbing out some easy runs with, um, you know, swimming or cycling, you know, and you'll still get really fit running, but you're just going to reduce, reduce that, um, that load. You're right. I was, I was an athlete in college at wrestled and then came to San Diego and started running and, but never really did any core work or any, weight work because I wanted to be faster. So I figured I'd lose weight and be faster. And I did get faster, yeah. but then I got injured. Yeah. All I'm going, what the heck's going yeah. on? And, uh, and one a buddy of mine go, you, you used to do a lot of pushups and yeah. So we'll start doing pushups and sit-ups again. And I did. And the injury started flowing away. So that balance is vital, isn't it? It really is. You, you need, you need that strength training in there um, just to make your body injury proof. And then it, it makes you more powerful too. So track club, babe, mom, talk to us about, uh, you know, mom having a baby, the before running with, with your daughter and then the after, uh, yeah. the process of what your body went through and, and how you felt, uh, stronger or not stronger after baby came. Of course. So, you know, I, I like had a big question mark with what it would look like in pregnancy and postpartum before I even got pregnant, I was just like, this is going to change everything. It's going to change my career. It's going to change, you know, my running, my times. And, um, it obviously it does, you know, pregnancy, pregnant running is its own joy, but I really, I, I did love it. It's a lot harder because I was running in the summer. It's like, um, mm -hmm like a beached whale out there in the heat, you know, you're just struggling to get through. You're, you're basically just waddling around there out, <laughs> out in the heat. But, um, you know, it was, it was still really, I was, I felt blessed to be able to do any running and even later stages of my pregnancy. And it wasn't fast and it wasn't impressive, but it doesn't need to be. You just need to like, listen to your body and be easy on it. The recovery took way longer than I thought, just not even in terms of running, just in terms of like, postpartum, you know, I, I feel like mm -hmm. it's not, it's kind of glossed over, you know, but I, I have tried to share openly about my, um, my postpartum journey, just so that other women who are out there who are like seeing people do like insanely amazing things three months after birth can know that it's also normal to be like 
barely doing anything and just a little bit struggling, you know, um, just showing the other side of the coin. And so I've had, I've had my, you know, my, my share of, uh, of, uh, things I've had to go through postpartum and, um, you know, the lack of sleep is really hard on your body too. And I think just being able to be easy on yourself while you're going through it is really, really key. And just I, every run is a gift to me. So I just try to look at it like that and not be frustrated that I'm so far from where I used to be when I was running, um, pre babies. So, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it takes time for your body to come back. I read somewhere that it's like five to seven years postpartum is when you're really recovered from the baby, you know? And so, it will, will be like three months postpartum and we will be like, why am I not back yet? And it just, it just takes time. Your body went through a lot and, and then sleep deprivation is so hard on your body. It's like torture. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, I saw it with my wife and my daughter and, and, uh, you know, you, you have, you have to support men. You have to support out there because it's something we have no fathom at all. What, uh, the women go through at, you know, through pregnancy and postpartum, God bless you all. Kim, you <laughs> mentioned at the beginning that you'd go out in the trails behind your house when you started running, and it sounds like you were running alone. Did you, you know, there's a whole safety factor, and obviously we know. know about stories of some women that have been, you know, attacked while they were out there running, and did you yeah. start running alone all the time, or do you run with a buddy now, or how do you do that? Yeah, so I didn't know any better, and that's honestly a lot of why I put up put out so much info about safety concerns with women because my my perspective is when you're new to the sport you you don't like you don't probably know about all these things that have happened like to other runners you're not aware that there's so many risks and um it's i just want to make sure that other women or or men are prepared out there are alert are aware because i wasn't and um i was running out there like there's like a fire trail that goes to another Mm -hmm. city, um, out here. And I would just be out there alone. I would get caught out there in the, like in the dark, you know, like the daylight savings would happen or, or, and I would be out there in the dark and I would have like border patrol, like escorting me back to my house because I was such a, like, I was just out there by myself. They were like, this is so dangerous. And finally, one of my mom's really good friends who's done like a million Ironmans all over the world. And like, I think over a hundred marathons, um, she was like, you cannot have Kimberly running out there alone. It's so dangerous. Like this and this has happened out there. And my mom's like, you have to stop. So I actually just like, if I would be running at night, I would go on the treadmill and I just didn't go out on those trails alone out there. And now I run like on a very populated trail by my house. So, um, and I run during the daytime, um, you know, when it's light and I'm like always within a mile of my house when I'm running. So I totally changed my pattern of running after, um, after our family friend told me like, this is really unsafe because I didn't know. And that's honestly a lot of why I share so much safety information because I was that new runner that was putting myself in extremely dangerous situations for no reason because I didn't know better. Um, and you know, I think that making people more alert and aware is just helpful. You know, it's not to create fear. It's just to create awareness so that you're taking the precautions that are the best for you. Yeah, I, you know, with my sisters and my wife ran marathon, my daughter, Boston Marathon finisher, and I was always concerned when they'd go out there by themselves. Uh, so I'd run with them or then it then it yeah. started becoming, you know, the old buddy system of having somebody to run with or a group or on a safe, safe area. So, yeah. uh, so that's the type of advice. If a, if a woman came up to you and says, I, I really can't find anybody to run with, what should I do to stay safe? What would you yes. suggest? I would say, so I, like, I loved the treadmill for that. And that's not for everyone, but I loved the treadmill if it was dark, you know, outside, or I didn't have anybody to run with, or just like staying in really well populated areas, you know, where, you know, it's well lit, it's well populated. There's a lot of people there, you know, there's some popular, you know, running routes in San Diego that are like Mm -hmm. through the city and everything like that. And something like that. And just being aware of what that area is like, being aware of where you're going and what the, what the situation is like. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, you can still run, even if you don't have like a group with you, just be aware of what you're doing and just try to pick the safer, um, options of your Um, surroundings. Yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's so important, especially like younger girls who just are newer to running just to, to know, you know, so they can just take the precautions, you know, 
a lot of us who've been in the sport longer, all these things are like, you know, these are normal. Like we would, we would do all these different things to stay safe. But if you're newer, you just might not be aware of the different precautions you can take. Hold on, everyone. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Curad Performance Series, the official medical supplier of Ironman. Curad's far infrared kinesiology tape encourages faster recovery and enhanced performance. Don't let the aches and pains of everyday training and racing slow you down. Make sure you check out all the Curad products at Amazon.com, at Walmart, and Ironman.com. And let Curad help you find your finish line. So we're speaking with Kim Clark, Track Club Babe. You know, the women's running is exploding. So many women, new women are coming into the sport. And a lot of the reasons why are because of people like you, Kim. Kim, what, what is your why, your number one why that you do this? Um, I do this because it brings me so much joy. Like it brings me joy to be running it brings me joy to help people realize their potential. Um, I feel like, you know, we're here on this earth to make an impact on people and to like, to help them along on their journey. And so I think that's why I do it. You know, I, I feel like running's changed my life and I want to help people enjoy their running and empower them in their running so that they're able to like find that confidence and find that joy in the sport. I, I I agree because you, I I can tell and following you and even knowing you as little as I do right now, but I think I know you a lot that you're doing it for all the right reasons. There's a lot of egos out there on the social media and they, they want to see themselves more than others and you want to see others and help them improve. So fantastic for you. How do you, how do you plan uh, your races or, or give advice to someone who wants to do their first run? What would you say to them? How do you know, what you did on planning your first 5k or 10k or whatever it was. Yeah. So I would say, don't do what I did, which was immediately (laughs) get into the sport (laughs) for the marathon. I would say, don't do that. Although if the only way that you'll get into the sport is because you're like enticed by the bucket list marathon, then do it. But I think that so many of us just like rush into the marathon or the half marathon Mm -hmm. and we miss all the developmental aspects of the sport. And then we're just like doing the marathon and just not seeing the progress we want. But if we would work at the shorter distances first, we would progress up and then have a much better marathon. So I would say start at the 5K and just you can do a bunch of 5Ks too without really wearing Mm -hmm. yourself out, unlike a marathon. Um, you know, and just start at the 5k and just really try to develop speed and and your running technique and just getting dialed in on training, do that. And you'll have a good foundation to build off of. Um, I wish I did that. I just immediately went to the marathon (laughs) and then I just got slower. You know, I just did marathon after marathon and got slower and slower. So don't, don't be like me. Yeah. I had a friend back in the day who was a a marathoner and ran a lot more than I did. And and I told him I wanted to get fast on the marathon. He goes, okay, then go run some faster 5Ks and 10Ks and do one track workout a week. And I'm going, what do you mean? I thought I had to put in 100 yeah. mile weeks to be faster at the marathon. No, no, run a faster 5K, 10K. So I started improving my 5K, 10K times, ended up doing a marathon and running my PR thinking, gosh, I didn't put the mileage in, but that yeah. speed work seemed to work. Do you do a lot of speed work on the track or the trails? Yeah, I do a lot of speed work basically on the trails because that's what I have right here. And Mm -hmm. I love, I love like um, training on like trails and grass. But yeah, I basically, I did marathon after marathon. I was only getting slower and I was getting really frustrated because I just was like so far from where I wanted to be. And then I, you know, I was trying to decide what to do. I had been planning on doing another marathon a few months later. And my husband was like, you need to stop. Like you're, every single one is not going good. You need a break. So I was like, okay. And so then I just was like, I'm going to work on just getting fast first. Like I'm just going to put the marathon on the back burner, work on getting fast. And so I did that for like, um, probably eight months where I just focused just purely on speed. And that just Mm -hmm. like totally transform my running. It transformed my husband's and my like training philosophy and just how we think about running and how to put like your 
goals together. You know, we're like, if you have a goal in the marathon, just figure out what the time is that you need in the mile and the 5k focus on those first. And until you get there, then don't move on to another distance, you know? So it just makes it like so methodical and like, you're like an architect instead of just like running out there, just hoping to run something fast, you know, for a marathon and without putting all of those other pieces into place first. So, um, yeah, I'm like a huge proponent of, speed work and just getting in that speed. Cause, and even in marathon training, we'll still put in like really fast, um, short right. workouts into there that might not traditionally be in a marathon program because you still have to have that speed. If you don't have that top end speed, then marathon pace feels so hard. But if you have a lot more speed, then we're able to make marathon pace feel really relaxed. And that's like our goal is to keep your speed during marathon training so you're feeling really comfortable at marathon pace. Did that, your first marathon was over six hours and your PR, I think what is 311? Did did that three hour and 11 minute marathon come to fruition because of the speed work? Absolutely. I just did, I did like eight months of like pure speed work, like every interval under a mile and mm. no, no long runs really. It was like 10 to 12 miles of a long run, um, on the weekends, but every, I didn't do an interval longer than a mile for eight months, which is like crazy if you're a marathoner, right? Um, no tempos, nothing. And then I did a shortened, um, marathon build. I think I just did like 10 weeks. And so that's just, I already had the speed and now I was just, um, getting in like that strength to hold my speed right. for the, right. the marathon time. And then I went and ran the marathon, not even looking at my watch ran super even, super relaxed, comfortable. I, I, I got really upset at myself after the marathon because I'm like, I ran it too easy. <laughs> I didn't race it. But <laughs> I could have broke three I was, hours. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was like, I should have raced this. I was out there like just like on this like like happy tour, waving at everybody, just like bouncing around the course. This guy took all these pictures of me at different parts of the course like there's all these people there and he found me because he was like, you were so happy the whole time. Like <laughs> this, this like guy who had a professional camera out there. So I, all my good pictures from that race are from some spectator who just was like, you just looked like you were having the best time. And I didn't know he was even taking pictures. So I have all these great pictures that somebody randomly took of me <laughs> because I, I just that. was enjoying myself. And I was like upset afterwards that I didn't race it. But, um, at that point I just wanted to win. I had had like really tough races for the last like four marathons. So I was just looking for a win and I knew I was going to get a win and I didn't want to sabotage the win by going for broke and, and breaking maybe. <laughs> right. Right. So where, where, yeah, where so was I, that? Mar- where was that marathon at Kim? It was CIM California international marathon. It's such a good course. Oh yeah. In, in uh, Sacramento. Yeah. That year, yeah. my husband um, ran his Olympic trials qualifier. So we both just had like mm. insane days that day. Just, it was so cool. So I finished my race and I'm like looking for him. I'm like, did you do it? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. You guys, you guys are, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, do you, you know, on recovery, we talked about recovery and the longer recovery after the marathon. Do you do any type of uh, physical therapy or get massages? I love massages. We chose to go to Thailand for our honeymoon because they do like the amazing Thai massages. It was my favorite. <laughs> so I'll usually do like um, a Thai massage every week during training. I really like mm. those. I don't know. Have you had one of those, Mike? Yeah, they beat you up, man. They beat you up. They're like stepping on you. They're sh- they're uh, pulling your arms off your body. <laughs> yeah, that's... But, um, yeah, it's pretty intense. It's definitely like a good like sports massage. It's you're like kind of screaming into the pillow half the time. I, but I don't like want to uh, tell him to stop. <laughs> but yeah, what's, I'll do those during training. What What's the next uh, event you have on your schedule? Well, I have like another five k at the Rock and Roll San Diego five k in two weeks, um, and I haven't like finalized it yet. But I might be doing a fall marathon, so we will see. But I haven't done a marathon since two thousand eighteen. So if I did one, it would be it's a it's a big deal for me just because I haven't done one for so long. So fall marathon, there's so many in the country. Do you want to run one of the well known ones or? Or not, or just, you know, an average race? Um, yeah, it would be a well-known one because I, w- I would be doing it for the experience. Obviously, I'm going to hope to get my body into shape by then. I have six months. <laughs> but it would be because, like, like, right now I'm not, like, I'm not in shape and I'm 
I, at this point, I'm not thinking I'm like going for a PR. So I'm not trying to do like a super fast course. It would be to have the experience and get back kind Mm -hmm. of into that world again. And I just have had a really tough um, couple years. And so this is like a gift to myself if I decide to do it, you know, like a gift that I get to give myself the time to train and just this experience that, I mean, marathons are just so special. They're also so hard, but they're also so special. And so it's like, it would, if I decided to do it, it would be a gift to me, um, you know, for everything that I've had to just push through these last couple of years. Well, I hope you give yourself that gift and you unwrap it for yourself at the finish line. You, you, you deserve that. <laughs> So we, thank you. One of the last questions on uh, the last question I ask on find your finish line, it's called uh, table racing, and table racing comes out of the Baja One Thousand racing. My friends race the Baja down there in their trophy yeah. trucks and everything, and they yeah. sit around a table afterwards and they reminisce about the event. So reminisce with us about an event or something that happened during an event that comes to your mind. Yeah. Um, so I will reminisce with you about my last marathon, um, because that one did not go to plan. Um, just, I think it's a helpful thing to reminisce about because it, yeah. So I, I was in shape to run a really great race, a new PR, not my, I had run 311 the year before and my hope Mm -hmm. was to better that. And I got sick during that season and it was just really tough. It was I, my body never recovered. You know, I got sick and then I'm still doing these big, big, big marathon workouts, um, on a body that's just not a hundred percent. And so I just never got better that whole season. Always still had a sore throat, always just was dealing with stuff. And I overraced in that season too. That was another key thing. So I learned a lot, but I went into the race and I had already told my coach if, if I'm like not on track to do what I want to do, I'm just going to pull from the race. And so I, I told them that, and I told my family that I was, I told my family, cancel your flights. I don't even want you guys to come up here because I just, I know my body's not there. It's, it's, um, it's been having a tough season. And, um, and my husband's family was coming to his aunt and uncle were coming and we had a whole crew. So we get there and within three miles, like I had not even, I don't even think I ran my first mile at goal pace, which is like, it was downhill. And it was just Mm. by mile three, cause it's, um, it was at CIM again. So it's undulating. And, um, my, um, piriformis that my whole, that whole area kind of locked up and, and restricted my stride. So I'm like, this is going to be a long day. And so I was in my head, like, I am going to drop in this race. I'm going to drop. And then at mile, I think like 11, um, I saw my husband on the course, which he was supposed to be like almost done. And I was like, what happened? And his foot had, um, he's, he had problems with his foot with like planner and like a neuroma. And so he dropped and I'm like, well, now I have to stay on the course because we have all this family (laughs) all over the course, like (laughs) waiting for us, you know? And I was now really frustrated because, you know, now I'm, I'm still staying on the course and, now I'm frustrated with myself because I, you know, was going so much slower than I anticipated going. And I like told myself something on that day that was like, um, like you don't get to beat yourself up in your worst moments. And that like shifted how I handled the rest of that day. Like I had been beating myself up because it was like, for me, it felt really humbling. Like I already you know, um, I had already put out what I wanted to do at that race, you know, and so people were following along and now I was not on track to do it at all. And I was just like, maybe you're not cut out for running. Like you are just putting too big of goals out there. You shouldn't be doing that. And then I just like recorrected myself and was just like, you don't get to beat yourself up on your lowest moments. You don't get to do that. You can only encourage yourself right now. So that's like all I did for myself to the finish line. And then like, I told myself like, you're not too good for any time. Like, it's okay. Like whatever time you get, like you get to be proud of, like, because you worked really hard and I fought the whole race, you know, it, even though my time mm-hmm. came in slower, I ended up running, I think a three nineteen, but I fought every minute and that's something to be proud of. And so I had to like reframe that because I had been in such a performance mode that I was like missing it, you know? And then, um, like my family's at that race and that's, the last marathon my dad got to see me at, you know, and like, I'm so happy I finished it. And he was so proud of me for finishing the race. I'm so sorry. Um, That's okay. Like he was just like, you did it. 
Like, that's what these are for. Like, you went and you pushed through and you did it. And, like, I just thought about that the other day. Like, I am so happy I got to finish the last marathon he saw me at. You know, like, I could have felt so prideful and just said, I'm going to walk off the course, you know? And like, this is like, I'm not going to run a 319, you know, as if it's something to be embarrassed about, which it's not. I would be thrilled today to run a 319. But like, I'm so glad that I like changed my attitude and kept myself on course because my dad was so proud of me. You know, he was so proud of his daughter who did another marathon. And he like had signs for me that I was a champion. I was so proud. And he got to see my last marathon that I did. And I would be so bummed now if I had said a 319 isn't good enough to finish too, you know, and I walked off the course because of, I held some type of pride about a time when it's not about a time. It's about just giving your best on a day. It really is. And so like now I can like look back, um, and just be so grateful that I did that marathon because I lost him, um, Christmas day, 2021. So it's like, you know, I did, I, I am running because of him, you know, and I am running marathons because he ran marathons and he got to see that marathon. It was just so proud of my like tenacity and my grit in finishing and just like, you know, it's like the heart that makes the champion, you know, it's not the performance. It's like who you are. And he was so proud of that. He, he's, he's still smiling. You know that Kim, don't you? I know. I know. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I get so emotional about it. (laughs) By the way, I, I, I think I'm going to steal that. You don't get to beat yourself up on a bad day. <laughs> that, yeah. is, that is golden. That is golden. You don't yeah. get to beat yourself up on a bad day. What the heck's wrong with you? I could, I could just yeah. see you, hear you talking to yourself on the course, even though you were going through pain and, and hurting and wanting to quit. And we've all yeah. wanted to quit. But, but when we don't quit, we're so yeah. darn happy we didn't do. We stuck with it no matter the time. Yeah. No matter what, you you stuck with it, Kim. I know, and I think that that's that's what makes you a runner. That's what makes you a runner. You know, it's 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 not about the times. It's not about the performance. It's about like, it's like that grit and that tenacity. That's what makes you who you are. And so I think like for me, being able to see like if you give your best, that's all that's all you're asked of. You know, and finding like joy and appreciation and pride for that and. I, you know, it was something I struggled with for so long in my running because I'm so performance based. That's just my personality, but being able to like have that shift and also just like share that shift with, you know, my community, because it's so easy to beat ourselves up when we're out there, we're doing amazing. If you're even running a marathon, you're already amazing, you know? And then we're like, the fact that I could run a 319 and be like, so upset at myself is absurd. Mm. You know, like right now I would like be thrilled. I'd be late to run a 319, (laughs) you know? And I'm just so glad like I didn't let pride on that day keep me from doing it. It was my second fastest marathon time, you know, and I was like yeah. about to walk off because it wasn't good enough for me. You know, it's just like that mentality, like holds so many people back from just enjoying the sport and it held me back from enjoying the sport. But now I like have a totally different mentality, which is why I'm able to go out and run like a 24 minute 5k and it's not going to destroy my self-worth, you know, and even though my best is like an 1850, you know, so I'm like five minutes away from where I was, but I'm like, I I did my best on that day. And I'm, you know, that's all you can do is like your best. And so I've, I've just had such like a, a, a better perspective in the sport, having been in the sport a little bit longer and gone through a lot with it. Right. Right. Well, as you know, running is life and life is running and it, uh, (laughs) it heals, it heals, it transforms. It helps you cope. It's so many yeah. things that uh, that it does. So, Kim, thank you very much for your time today. Again, how can people find you? Because I know you answer people back and all that good stuff. So what's the best ways, again, to find you? Yeah, you can find me at Track Club Babe on Instagram and or Track Club Babe at gmail.com. And I respond to all DMs. And, Mike, I want to tell you something really fast. One of my really good friends, Jill, I guess when she was finishing her Ironman that she <laughs> um, she was finishing when you were off site for like a couple seconds oh. and you went and called her afterwards oh. and she like, it, that just is so special and that just shows how much all this means to you, like how much it means to you to be there for people at their biggest moments and celebrate it with them. So I just thought that was just like amazing, just that she like, it it meant so much to her. And that's the kind of things that make this community so special. 
that, thank you very much for that. It 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 does. So again, Kim, you were you were a blessing today. I'll tell you that. It oh, thank uh, you. anybody who's going to hear this podcast is going to put those shoes on and get their butts out there and go running right <laughs> away. I I know I they hope are. So. Is, uh, so thank you that. again and thank you everybody for listening to another edition of Find Your Finish Line. Keep in mind Pillar Performance. Check it out. Triple Magnesium Powder. My code, M-I-K-E-23. Always remember, you're the cause of your own experiences. If you keep those experiences positive every step of the way and every day, you'll find your finish line. Take care of yourself, everybody. Aloha.